Okay, hi. Melina here, and I'm just going to try to make this video go by real quick because there's a lot of books to talk about, and I don't want to end up making this video, like, half an hour long. Um, I have been wanting for a while, because people have been making it for a while, to make my favorite books of 2017. I haven't made a video like this before, like, a favorites, and, um... You know, people were like, oh, it's kind of ridiculous to do, like, the 17 favorite of 2017 and stuff like that. But I do have 17 books to talk about. <laughs> and that's just because I read 81 books in the year of 2017. And it just so happened that literally 17 stood out to me out of those 81. <laughs> like, I liked a lot of them, but um, I felt like these were the only ones that I really just wanted to mention and remember that they were the ones that I read this year. So, um, I'm gonna kind of keep them quick. I might say the synopsis and, like, who's it by. Um, a majority of these I either gave 4.5 or 5 out of 5 stars. And, yeah, it's basically just gonna be, like, me, like, oh, gee, I love this. And, um, these are in order, at least whatever order I kept, like, looking at and trying to make it. So it goes from 17 all the way until my number one favorite book of the year. Um, so at number 17, I have Hidden Bodies by Caroline Kepnes. This is the sequel to You, and um, without trying to reveal too much of what happens in the first one, because it's uh, the last book in the duology, uh, I liked it, and the thing is, I probably would have loved it if this was like the first book in the series. It's just, um, last year, You was like my favorite book that I read, well like, in 2016, not. Um, so this one, I... I guess it was just that it never was going to amount to the amount that I loved you, but it was still a very good book. It was very fun. Joe still had his very strong, like, prominent voice that's different from a lot of narrators. And usually I'm kind of put off by the setting of L.A., and this one is set in L.A., but I think it also was interesting seeing, like, such a cynical, crazy character like Joe, like, in that setting. And I do plan on rereading you and this one this year in 2018 because the TV show, the Lifetime TV show, is coming out soon and I want to refresh everything in my head because I'm just really excited and I did end up loving this, just not as much as you. <laughs> um, then at number... I dropped one. <laughs> uh, number 16, I have uh, Unbreakable by Cami Garcia. This is the first book in the Legion series. Um, this is kind of like a... Why a horror novel about um, this girl who her mom passes away. This all happens like within like the first chapter or two. And um, she thinks that it was just like a heart attack or something. And then it turns out uh, that it was like this creature, like this ghost thing. And the next day when she's like in her bed sleeping, this ghost tries to kill her. And then these two boys like, what shotguns come in and kill the ghost, and they're like, yo, you're one of us, and we're gonna start, like, this journey together. <laughs> okay, and, um, it felt very much like supernatural fan fiction, which is something that I've said in my review and in my wrap-up the month that I read this, um, and it was just crazy and fun, but I was so addicted to reading this, and I really want to continue with it. It was supposed to be a trilogy, but I believe after the second book, like, it's been, like, quite a few years since the second book, and then Cami Garcia never finished it, but, um, I'm, I still want to pick up the second one and see how I like it, because I loved all the characters, I loved the plot, the writing was so fun, it's great, and if you want something that you can, like, binge read, this is good. Okay. Okay, at number 15 here, I have Turtles All the Way Done by John Green, you know, the new John Green book that everyone had been anticipating for years. I loved it. It's just the reason that it's probably much lower on my list than it might be for some other people's lists is that I felt like the plot wasn't substantial enough. It's basically a YA contemporary about this girl named Aza, who is living with um, OCD and she has thought spirals regularly and it is own voices because John Green has OCD, but there's like a whole plot where she's like um, trying to be like a detective for this mystery with this missing billionaire and stuff, and I felt like when it came to the plot it was kind of all over the place but the characters felt so real and being inside Aza's head felt so real that it was just incredible and yeah next we have the book that fell and that is The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood um I feel like a lot of people have been reading this this past year as well this is 
an adult uh, dystopian novel, like one of the first dystopians out there about this society where like nuclear stuff happens after wars and women can't give birth anymore. Um, except very few. Most of them are barren, but the ones who aren't are forced to kind of be like these sex slaves for these um, privileged women. Like, they sleep with their husbands, and it's like kind of like they're forced to be impregnated by these rich men and provide babies for these rich families. And it's very scary. It's very something that could happen in today's society, but it is so interesting, and it's so realistic in the way that you see how it happens it's like crazy because it seems very like it could happen and so yes um i have that one okay these next few i'm going to mention very briefly because i do not have my physical copies with me um number 13 is girls in pants by anne brochers it's the third book in the sisterhood of the traveling pants series um can't say much about it because it's the third one i loved the first one hated the second one and then so i was like i'm going to try the third one and if I hate it, I'm going to be done with the series, and I ended up loving it just as much as I love the first one. And, yeah, it's about these four girls who, um, are best friends, and during their summer vacations, they can't really, they end up going their separate ways for different vacations and stuff during the summer, and they all fit into this pair of pants, and they send them to each other, and they send letters to each other, and it's just really good. Loved it like probably one of the most underrated contemporary series in YA so I think lots of people should pick that up more than they do. Then <sighs> number 12 is A Clash of Kings by George R. R. Martin. Um, it is the second book in the Song of Ice and Fire series. I read A Game of Thrones last year. It was one of my favorite books of the year. Those probably like top five favorite books um, of that year. <laughs> this one is a lot lower for me because there's just a lot of people that I loved and a lot of characters that I liked seeing and liked having their storylines in the first book are dead now. <laughs> so I had to kind of adjust to not seeing them in this one and it was kind of hard for me. And um, But like all of my people that I loved, like you know Arya and Sansa and Jon and Daenerys, I still loved seeing what was going on with them. There was a lot more politics in this one and I do feel like the books kind of go on for longer than they need to and there was lots of added perspectives, some of which I really liked, some of which I thought were unnecessary, but I am still really excited to pick up the third one this year. And then the last one for right now that I don't have with me is um, Songs About a Girl by Chris Russell, I believe is his name. Um, this is the first book in a duology or trilogy, I can't remember. That um, It's a YA like British book about this girl who went to school with this boy and now that boy is like kind of like the Harry Styles of like this very popular British boy band and they have invited her because she's a photographer to come on tour with them and start taking um, like their official tour photos and be like their professional photographer and then she kind of falls into like this love triangle with two of the boy members and um, the band members. <laughs> And it's really good, really addictive, and it's something that I read kind of earlier in the year, and I haven't been able to stop thinking about it. Like, it still comes into my head occasionally, so I would definitely recommend that for people. And I believe the sequel is out only, like, in England, but not in the U.S., so I think I need to order it or something. <laughs> um, and then number ten, we have come to the top ten, uh, is Gilded Cage by Vic James. This is the first book in a series. I don't know how long the series is going to be, but it is a dystopian slash fantasy about this, um, this society where there's people who have powers, and the people who have powers are regarded as, like, the rich, and they kind of are, like, dictators over everything now, like, the entire country and stuff. And so all of the normal people, like, who don't have powers and stuff, have to serve, I believe, seven years of working for these people, and they can choose to do it when they're really old, when they're young to get it out of the way, but they have to spend seven years working as kind of slaves for these people who have magical abilities. And you follow this one family who they, the parents all decided that they were going to, like, do their, um, their years, so they were like, it's might as well, let's just all do our years together, like, with their kids, and they have, like, teenagers and young kids, and they were like, we're all going to go together and just be slaves together and they're like but it's fine because there's like one where you have to work um in this kind of 
like, where you, you run, like, the oiling system, and you do all of the, like, dirty, like, really hard jobs, and lots of people die working in that area and stuff, and that's, like, the hard version of, um, people serving their years, or you could work in the houses and basically be just, like, servants where you clean up after and, like, cook for the rich magical people. <laughs> um, so they're like, it's cool, we have connections, and we're all just gonna go work and be servants in the fancy house and everything. Um, but their teenage son, uh, I forget his name, Luke, <laughs> um, he is, he, uh, accidentally gets set apart from his family, so the family is all going to the fancy house, and he's going to, like, that terrible society that people don't really want to work in. Um, my sister got this from where we both work now, as an ARC, uh, and she asked me, she, like, it was before I worked there, and then she was like, do you want this? And I was like, I don't know, it sounds kind of, like, weird, S sounds kind of slow. She brought it to me, and I was like, you know what, the cover's nice, I'm gonna, like, pick it up, and I ended up, like, reading it in, like, three days, which is fast for me. <laughs> and I loved it so much, I'm excited for the sequel, it's so good, and, um, yeah, I would recommend picking it up, because it was fantastic. Obviously, I think that, that all of these books... <laughs> Um, number nine I have is, um, Maybe Someday by Colleen Hoover. It is a new adult contemporary romance book about this girl who, after breaking up with her boyfriend, she starts kind of developing this relationship with, um, her next-door neighbor. And it has very strong music elements to it, um, and it has good disabled rep, and i that's about all I can say without giving it away, because... Colleen's books are kind of formulated to where everything has to kind of, you should go in as blind as you can, but I like that each of them tend to have a creative element of her books, and I loved the authoring, well, the, um, musical kind of instrumental aspect of it, uh, it's definitely up there with one of my favorites of hers, and yeah, there's that one. Um, then number eight, that is my phone. <laughs> Um, is Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy by Cassandra Clare and Friends. Um, this is my first time ever reading this because I was like, I'm super behind on all of the Shadowhunter Chronicles books, so I really wanted to read this. I didn't expect to get as emotionally invested as I did. The last story made me so mad and I was sobbing and just, uh, she likes killing people way too much. <laughs> And, um, obviously, like, the Shadowhunter Chronicles is my favorite book series of all time, because Sandra Clare is my favorite writer, and this did not disappoint. I love Simon, I love all of the new, um, drags that were introduced. I loved it all. <laughs> um, and I really liked rereading through and reading new Shadowhunter Chronicle books in 2017. That was, like, the year of me reading, like, a crap ton of Cassandra Clare. Um, then at number, what are we at? Eight? Seven? Seven. I believe that we're at seven. Yes. Number seven is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin O'Leary Sands. This everyone has heard of. It has so many awards. Everyone has talked about it. Most of the people who I've heard like ever read this, like on booktube and stuff, have been obsessed with it. This is a YA contemporary romance about um, these two Latino boys falling in love, basically. Um, it frustrated me that this is marketed as a romance and they don't really get together or kind of express their feelings for each other until, like, the very last page. So that is why I'm really excited for uh, the sequel that I believe is coming out this year, because I want to see their dynamic when they're together. Um, but the writing was gorgeous. Um, I have almost never related to a character as hardcore as I've related to Ari. And I just love Dante. He was a little cinnamon roll, and I just love the characters. I just feel like, this didn't really have a plot, first of all. And it frustrated me how long it took them to get together, but I did like kind of why, like, and how long it took for the acceptance of, like, sexuality and stuff because of, you know, Benjamin's personal story and how it kind of ties into this book. Super really want to read more of his books, because, um, like, I've discovered so many good authors this year. Margaret Atwood, I made sure I read more of her to see if she was one of my favorites. So I definitely need to read more by him. This was fantastic.
very beautiful. <laughs> um, then what are we at? Number, number six. Okay. Number six is Rise of the Isle of the Lost by Melissa De La Cruz. Um, this is book three in the Descendants book series. Um, I, this, I made a book talk slash review for this, um, and it is my most viewed, um, video that I've made, like, booktube related, like, ever. It has, like, over a thousand views, which is crazy for me, because most of my other ones have never even hit, like, a hundred views. <laughs> um, I adored this. I got it as, like, almost as soon as it came out. I read it almost as soon as I bought it. <laughs> um, and yes, this is basically a setup for the second movie. It introduces characters like Uma, Harry, and Gil, and you kind of see what's going on with the Rotten Four and everyone in Ordon, but I can't really say anything more than that because spoilers. Um, but I loved this so much. I tabbed the hell out of it. I made a book talk about it. I adored this. Um, I also made a book talk for The Handmaid's Tale, which I will try to remember to link those, even though I'm bad at that. <laughs> um, then let's see. Number five is Landline by Rainbow Rowell. Rainbow Rowell is one of my all-time favorite authors, and um, I try to make sure that out of my top five favorite authors, I read something of them every year, which is uh, Cassandra Clare, uh, Stephen King, R.L. Stein, John Green, and Rainbow Rowell. I have read something from all of them this past year. Um, the R.L. Stein was fun, but it didn't make my list because it was a reread. <laughs> um, and then I think everything from all of the other authors is definitely on this list. So this was my Rainbow Rowell for last year. This year I plan on reading Carry On, and if I get to one of her other two books besides that, cool. If not, that's the one I'm going to read this year. This is an adult contemporary romance about this girl, well, this woman, who um, is a writer for a TV show network, and she's in this kind of failing, estranged marriage, and all of a sudden she starts getting these calls on a landline phone at her parents' house, and it's her talking to her husband from the past, kind of like when they first started dating that kind of age. It is so beautiful. Um, and it's interesting seeing a book that's kind of like what the couple already established by the time you start it, but there's lots of flashbacks to like their college years when they start dating. And it is, she's just good at making some of the most precious love stories ever. And I loved this so much. Um, and yeah, that's about all I have to say for that. You should definitely read it. Magical realism, contemporary adult romance. <laughs> um, that was my number five. So, you know, we're already in the top five. That was five. Um, now we're going to go to number four, you know, just slowly climb into the, the number one spot. We're going to go to one that, even though I loved it a lot, considering it's number four, it took me like four months to read. <laughs> um, and that is It by Stephen King. Um, this is my fifth Stephen King book that I've read. It's not my all-time favorite, but it's definitely up there. I want to get an It tattoo now. <laughs> and I just loved it so much. It made me cry. It made me angry and happy and just so immersed in everything. It didn't need to be as long as it was, but I loved it so much. Um, and I saw the remake movie this year. I love the original with Tim Curry. I'm obsessed with everything that kind of is part of this fandom. I love the character so much, and this just has solidified itself as like a number one special place in my heart. It's definitely, this, I love all these books, but the top five is definitely going to be like ones that I think about constantly. Top ten are probably like some of my favorites of all time. <laughs> and I loved this so much. Everyone knows what it's about. You know, killer clown, whole group of ragtag children trying to fight it. And I'm excited for the movie, the second movie. Top three. Which, before I knew what any of these other ones were, I constantly, throughout the year, as I read them, knew what my top three were. Like, one, two, three. <laughs> so these are, like, the best ones. Um, so number three, I have never heard, like, anyone talk about. Um, and it is The Beast is an Animal by Peter Nell Van Arsdale. This, I believe, is a standalone uh, YA fantasy book. It reads like a very old, like eerie um, fairy tale book. It has great romance, strong characters, gorgeous poetic writing. This, 
I don't know why everyone's sleeping on it because it sounds like so many things that people rave about, but it's like probably better than a majority of them. <laughs> um, it has like creepy witches and this like beast creature. And you follow this girl named Alice, but they spell it kind of differently. And it's, um, I read this like in March, like in the very beginning of the year, but I haven't stopped thinking about it since then. I would love to see kind of like a movie of it or something, or even just like a sequel, even though it wrapped up so beautifully. <laughs> um, and it's about, um, she meets these witches who have been wronged by these people in this town, and the witches come to basically kill everyone in the town, but after they meet her and they see that she's not afraid of them, they decide to spare all of the children in the town and just kill all the adults, and it's kind of following that and the aftermath of that and how society kind of formulates to that, and it is so good. It is so good. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> top two. Um, super just yes. Um... <laughs> My number two spot for best books of 2017 is Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. Again, super hyped for Love, Simon later this year, even though I'm also terrified because I don't want them to mess this up because it was one of the best YA contemporaries I've ever read in my life. I tabbed the crap out of it. I read this for book two thon so I read it in like two or three days. It is so good. Um, I feel like, again, it's like won awards, it's one of the most popular LGBT books, like, like, these two, these two babies everyone raves about if you like, like, gay YA lit, and I finally know why. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this was just great, it's about, you know, Simon, who basically is closeted, and he kind of does this anonymous chat with this boy at his school, and this guy starts blackmailing him, and it's just so good. It's so fun and sweet. And I did also um, read Becky Albertalli's other book that she has out, The Upside of Unrequited, which I did really like. I gave that one, like, a 4.5, but it also made me really sad. And this one was just, like, a whole crap ton of happy. <laughs> um, so definitely uh, preferred this one. Definitely want to reread it. <laughs> and, of course, the number one book that I read in the entirety of 2017, which if I didn't read this one this year, Simon would have won, but I did. And that is City of Heavenly Fire by Cassandra Clare. So, gonna try to be quick. Um, this, my favorite series of all time is the Shadowhunter Chronicles and like the Mortal Instruments and all of that. I have been reading them as they came out since I was like 10, but then when this one came out, I didn't realize how hardcore Cassandra Clare was going to expand the Shadowhunter Chronicle universe and stuff. Like, I didn't know that the Dark Artifices was going to exist. I didn't know that Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy was going to exist. I didn't know, and I thought this was the last book that I would ever have with these characters or in this world, and it scared me. <laughs> so uh, I bought it, like, the day it came out, and I'd never read it until this year, <laughs> which is just awful. But of course, finally reading this and it just has all these characters that I love so much and this writing and this world that I love so much. It was so good. I cried more than probably healthy during reading this book. I again tabbed the crap out of it. And um yes, this this was everything. Um I still think my favorite in the series is City of Lost Souls, but this is definitely like trying to come up there for it. And yes, those are all of my favorite books that I read in 2017. Uh, let me know if some of them are some of your favorites, what your favorites were. Uh, subscribe and like if you liked this video and my face and my books. And goodbye.